Hi everyone, go to Luke here. Um, I'm going to be doing some more experiments with this mostly permanent magnet motor uh, design that I came up with some years back. And uh, I guess it just keeps coming back to me that there are other things that can be done. And uh, there's been some replicators that have replicated the work, but uh, maybe also didn't understand uh, some other newer uh, characteristics that are interesting about this uh, motor design. So I'm going to share uh, everything that I know uh, so far that I have found and we're going to start just basically here I've got an inductor which is a shaded pole uh, motor uh, coil or inductor if you wish and here's the basic configuration of my first uh, mostly magnet motor which is just utilizing a magnet on this side here and I've got a half of the magnet with uh, let's say let's call this the north or the south pole whatever which one you want and there's the other pole on the other side and again here is the other magnet on the other end here these are new Dimian magnets and uh, anyways uh, so uh, both the magnets are in the same pole so let's say this is a north here and that's a north there so both north are facing together or you can have both south facing together it doesn't really matter as long as you have the same poles uh, together on each end and the inductor will move once you apply current to it we have a 12 volt battery here I've got a uh, watts meter there that's hooked up you can see the voltage on the battery right there and I've got a push button switch and I also got myself a little uh, scale here so uh, I can go in uh, five gram increments uh, with this scale so now if I push uh, the button here I'm gonna have to hold the camera with the other end other hand here and we can get a reading let's uh, push that so now the inductor is pulling and we've got 30 grams of pull force right there. I've let go of the button now. And uh, let's look at the watt meter again here. Here it is at zero. I push the button. And so we're consuming about 1.2 watts uh, to get this 30 grams. Uh, I let go of the button now. So to get this 30 grams of pull force there. So now I'm just going to do a slight modification. Okay, so now we're back and uh, all I've done is I moved the magnets over from each end here and then just put them on top here and you'll see why I'm doing that. So again, our two poles are facing downwards like this now and we're going to do another test with that. But before we do that, actually I forgot to uh, do the uh, ohm test here on this uh, inductor there. So that inductor as it sits is uh, 110 ohms. And if we do a inductance test, we've got 0.867 Henry's. So 867 uh, millihenries. All right. So that's as is right there. And that's, uh, you'll see why I've given you the uh, inductance, uh, the resistance, that's just so that you know uh, about that. Now I'm going to disconnect my meter here. And we're going to, we've got our scale ready, and we're going to push the button again. Got to change hands again here. So now we do another pull check. And now we've got 35 grams, so not much of a change. And our power should be about the same, yeah, 1.2 watts. And I let go of the button now. And that's our pole there. So the reason why I did that, change the magnets, is to show you that as soon as you add this exterior piece here of uh, lamination. These are uh, transformer laminations. Okay, so I've added that now to the outside here. 
So let's say this is our north facing down here. So now we've got our south across this outside piece. And let's do another uh, test now and see how much uh, pull force we have there. So if you look now, we've got 65 grams, okay, of pull force. And again, we're at our 1.2 watts of uh, consumption of power. And there you go. I'd let go now of it here. So now I, we can uh, connect back our inductance meter here and check to see what we have as inductance. So our inductance is going up. So we're now 942 millihenries. Now it's not just because the inductance has gone up that we are getting more pull force, though it is ha helping. It is the fact that we're now uh, utilizing the opposite pull of the outside here of the inductor when it's uh, activated with current. So that's the bonus there. So what now I'm going to do is add more magnets. So I'll add another set of magnets there on the uh, bottom and then we'll do another test. Okay, now the only change that I have made is I've added uh, two more of these magnets uh, on it. So we now have a total of four of these magnets. Again in the same orientations. This is north, north, and north is on this side, north is on that side. Obviously the south is going across this external uh, uh, bridge here. Alright, so now we'll do a, another push button test. And now we have 85 grams of uh, pull power. Alright, so now the only other change now that I'll make is add another bridge. Now we have two of these external bridges. We'll have to pause the camera here to... Okay, now I have basically we've got four magnets now and two uh, bars here across. And there's our scale and we shall push the button. And now we have 115 grams of pull force for again uh, 1.2 watts. So no more energy in and just more pulling power. And let's take a, an inductance uh, reading here. Because we have change, we have added more cores, so our inductance should be going up. So now we've got basically one Henry uh, of inductance. Now I will add some more magnets uh, on this side here and we will do another test. Okay, now I've added two more magnets here on this uh, dimension here of the uh, center core and we'll do another test. And now we have 175 grams of pulling power. And now I'm going to add a core here across and do another test. Okay, now we've added an external core here as well. And let's do our test again. 155. That's interesting. Let's try that again. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Uh, I'm not getting a, a good balance here. It's getting stuck because now it's pulling on this side here and the uh, this is just sliding on the core here. So the inductor, the center of the inductor gets kind of stuck and it's not giving us a true reading. To be able to fix that, I have to add the magnets on this side here and the core to get a real uh, balance so that that uh, inductor can slide on there. I've got no sliding mechanism here. It's just experiments. So I hope you understand what the gain here is compared to what my previous technique was, which was adding the magnets here at the ends and then trying to utilize the flux of the magnet here and going around back on the outside. And now if you just simply orient the magnet like these here, 
adding all the flux to the center core in all the same uh, pole and then easily then right away all the flux going into the external cores will immediately go into the cores. Now your outside cores should be not as thick as your internal core, right? Because the thicker the material is, uh, the less, uh, the more the, the magnet flux will need to fill that core material. So these should be at least half the thickness of your center core. So that is the big gain here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the magnets on that side and the uh, core so that we can do a test here and balance it all out. Okay, so now I've added the two magnets here on the other side here. So now we've got that full uh, magnet around the center core here. So we all have our north facing inside here. Quite a bit of flux now going there and all our south on the R4 uh, external bars. There's one here underneath it as well. So same thing on both ends. And let's do our, our test. So now we're up to 215 uh, grams of pulling force for the identical uh, input power. And uh, there you go. So there's quite a bit of difference. And what I can do is is add some little bit here more of of magnets that I have. They're hard to get them. So basically there'll be a point where the core itself will reach uh, uh, saturation. I'm gonna get the other magnet here. And until that saturation point is not there you can always keep adding magnets. So these are magnets that I had that I cut up in pieces here to make everything I can. So now we've even, uh, even added a little bit here of more uh, flux going into the center core. And let's see, let's zero that, let's see if that makes a little bit of a difference too. Yeah, so there you go. We're up to 225. So we could keep, uh, if we had stronger magnets, we could keep adding of more of these magnets until you get to the point, like I say, where the core is saturated. It can no longer take any more magnetic flux. And that's actually the point probably where you want to ideally get this to the point where all this uh, reaches that maximum flux. So let's give that another quick test. I push my button here. You see it stiffening up. Oh, there we go. We're up. Whoa. <laughs> we're up to 255. I think maybe that might have been a maximum reading here. Let's give it a try. Yeah, 240. Yeah. So what this unit does is it keeps a memory of the uh, maximum pull. Let's give it another shot here. You see my finger there? 250. So we're around, we're around that range there. And it's always at our 1.2 watts. There, here I am pushing the button there. So this is what I wanted to share uh, that uh, I have found uh, to date. And uh, there's another video that I'll do uh, of experiments uh, showing you the, basically the, there is a downfall that this also has a generator effect. And which means basically uh, there's uh, uh, the this becomes a generator, and it is fighting against the current that's going in there. And uh, there is w there is a way that I've uh, been experimenting to uh, overcome uh, that generator effect, and we're going to do experiments on that and uh, see if we can evolve this to a uh, a real efficient uh, functioning motor. So that's about it for now, and thanks for watching. Bye now.